Okay, next job we're going to do is we're going to remove the cylinder barrels and the pistons, followed by removing the timing case. Now, the perceptive amongst you will notice that they're already removed. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't have removed them up until this point, which is why I've not covered it before. The... Uh, the thing is, the reason why I have already removed them is that I thought I might need to lock the engine either by putting a bar through the small ends, which I will probably have to do now anyway, or by locking uh, the pinions in the timing case. And that's why I've taken the timing cover, case cover off and I've already removed the barrels. As it happened, I didn't need to use either of those methods to lock the engine. The reason I thought I might have had to was because there is a special locking tool for the primary chain to enable you to undo the engine sprocket nut and the shock absorber nut in the primary chain case. And I didn't have that tool. And so I thought, hmm, I'm probably going to have to lock the engine through the barrels. So I took the barrels off and then the timing case. But in the end, I just used rag to lock the primary chain and that worked fine. Now, the reason I wouldn't normally have taken the barrels off at this point is to protect the conrods. Because the more chance there is of damaging the conrods, then uh, the, the worse. They're very easy damaged by banging and knocking themselves against the sides of the crankcases. So generally, I leave the barrels and pistons in situ until this point, if I can, for that reason. Okay, and uh, the only reason I've taken the timing cover off, uh, again, is because I thought, well, maybe I will, uh, I will use a, uh, an old pinion I've got to jam between the different uh, pinions in there, again, to lock the case that way, but I didn't need to. And I'm now going to go through the removal of the barrels and, uh, and pistons, followed by removing the timing cover. I hope that all makes sense. It probably doesn't, but hey, that's the way it is. So to remove the uh, cylinder barrels, you need your... I, I don't know what these are, uh, you call them, like a star spanner. It's, uh, it says it's half, it's half, a, half inch and um, it's like a ring spanner, but... These are very special thin ring spanners because they need to be thin enough to get under the fins and onto the nut. A normal spanner, it won't, it won't get through that gap. All right, so, um, so I'm going to go around and all these nuts, I don't know if you can see, but they're all like special like serrated nuts that fit this serrated uh, spanner. Okay, so I'm going to go around. And that's all that holds the um, cylinders down now, the barrels. Uh, and I'm going to uh, go around and uh, do that. And then we'll have a quick inspection, an initial inspection to see what the barrels look like, what the balls look like um, before we carry on. So I've undone all these cylinder base nuts all the way around. And they're the only thing that's holding the barrel down. And But then the main thing I've done, as you can see, I've then put some cable ties around the tops of the tappets, okay? And the reason for that is when you lift the barrels off, the tappets will simply slide down um, through the, uh, no, I can't never think of the word, the, the actual tappet block, that's the word I'm looking for. The tappets will just simply slide down through the tappet block and fall out. Well, as with the push rods and, and with most things, uh, you want them to go back in the same place because again they wear and uh, and they wear a certain pattern and if you then change the round they can wear very rapidly um, because they're wearing a different place so um, and that's what I do you can put rubber bands or whatever you want around around the um, tops of the tappets but it's just you don't want them to slide down when you take the barrels off also I've just noticed that this there's a very slight dent if you see on that centre fin. That's where someone's whacked it. Um, you know, trying to put the barrels back on. You don't realise just how very easy it is to to bend fins. Even using like a rubber. If I used a rubber mallet, you could 
And you think, oh, you rub, rub them out, it'll be okay. No, it won't. Because it's heavy, poof, and you'll bend that fin. You might not snap it off, but you'll bend it. So hopefully we'll be mending that and straightening that fin up later on. Okay. So I've removed all the uh, nuts and I'm going to try and get the barrels off. But they are, yeah, of course, stuck down. So, again, I'm going to run it, I'm going to heat them up uh, first again with my blowtorch before I do anything else. Again, it just makes it just helps to, to release things. I'm, I'm going to heat up that the, the joint first and th before I start trying to get those barrels to separate off the crankcases. Just going around, just gently heating the uh, mating faces with uh, with the blowtorch. Nothing, uh, nothing major. Just getting them warmed. And what I normally do in the cold garage, I normally heat them until um, the condensation disappears, and that way they're warm, but they're still they're not too hot uh, to touch. Okay, I've gone around and just uh, warmed that uh, joint. Let's see if I've got any movement, which I haven't. And then double, double, treble check that I've actually undone all the nuts. This is so easy to miss one. The same for all the cases. The first thing you do when removing the case is double check. Right, okay, I'm going to resort to a little bit of violence now. I've got my rubber hat mallet and I'm going to hit sideways never upwards but you can hit the face of the fins without fear of doing too much damage there they are going yeah it's going you can hit it sideways okay that's all right it'll take a bit of but you know never hit up and above all never hit down like someone did there Off. There we go. Now, and the nuts come out because there's not enough room to take them out. Yeah, there's not enough room above the top of the bolt, uh, the stud, to get them out when the barrels are still fully down. So I'm just checking that they're completely undone. Sometimes they're still on by a thread or so. Yeah, this one's still on by a thread there. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to carry on pushing the barrels off a little bit. Too much. Oops. Okay, we've got the. Uh, pistons on so they're going to protect the pistons are going to help to stop too much damage occurring to the conrods against the lip of the crankcases but I am going to pack this uh, this M1 because that's going to catch this is a triple engine so it's a 120 degree crank so a 120 degree crank means that the pistons are at 120 degree angles. So one's at 120, one's at 240, one's at 360 degrees round. There we go. Barrels are off. And here we have our pistons. And I'm just going to now, I'm going to try and protect those conrods as best I can. Every time they hit the edge of that crankcase, there's a danger of them just nicking, putting a nick in the side of the crumb rod. Okay, let's have a look. Pistons, uh, yeah, they don't look too bad. No signs of major scoring or burring or partial seizure or anything like that. Initial inspection. Initial inspection, balls don't look too bad. They are, they are scored. They at least need a rehone. The very least I do on a triple would be to rehome 180, 180 to, uh, grip, 180 uh, grip and brand new rings, normally goats, goats rings. Again, we'll come on to that when we come to the refurb. But they don't look too bad. And there's the tappets. I think you can see this on the camera, can you? 
Yeah, so here are the tappet feet there that go up and down. And as you can see, because we've um, we put cable ties around, they haven't fallen out, they're still there. And later on, if I do take them out, I can mark them as I take them out so I know which ones are which and which way around it goes. So please with that. Barrels off, and the next thing we're going to do is then remove the pistons. Right, <clears throat> remove the barrels, so now I want to remove the uh, pistons. So I've protected the pistons and the con rods um, from damage from the crankcases. Uh, internal circuit uh, removing pliers. And we've got the old circlip in here. I don't know if you can probably can't see it, but there's a circlip now it comes that holds the gudgeon pin in. I'm just checking to see what type of uh, circuit it is. I will replace these as a matter of course. Uh, always good to replace your uh, gudgeon pin circlips because you really don't want those uh, coming undone. And obviously, every time they're reused, they uh, they lose their tension. Right, uh, so that circuit is out, and I wonder, I'll see oh, yeah, whether sometimes, if you're lucky, the gudgeon pin will come straight out. Probably not lucky. So I'll take the uh, circuit back from the other side. Okay, gudgeon pins uh, wanted to come out, but it's a bit tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply gentle heat to the piston and just to warm it enough so that it expands slightly, just so the gudgeon pin will come out, come out easily uh, without damage. A bit of roasted towel always goes down well. Let's hope the smoke alarm doesn't go off, it probably will. Go on, baby. Good. So that's the screwdriver that's uh, just exactly the right size so it catches the gudgeon pin. So I can drive the uh, gudgeon pin out. Wrist pin. Wrist pin. Hey man, it's a wrist pin, as the Americans would call it. So there's the um, con rods on a triple, there's no bush, they're plain. Uh, I've already started to mark the pistons right, centre and left to make sure they go back in their uh, right places later on. Right, first one's out, so I'm going to turn the engine over around, uh, over a bit, then do the centre one, then the far end one, keep repeating until all three are out. Right, uh, I've taken the uh, pistons off, uh, just having a quick look down inside the crankcase. So this is the uh, inlet camshaft and the exhaust camshaft. Uh, the main, the main crankshaft there. Here are the con rods, and these are the small ends at the top of the con rod and the big ends at the bottom of the con rod. And everything uh, looks good. You know, there's no nasty, uh, no nasties in there that I can see. Also, we're going to strip it down all down anyway. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, you know, all uh, feels good. There doesn't seem to be any play anywhere. Um, so there's no horror stories in there, which, which there can be. You know, I've sometimes seen these these nuts have come loose, the big end bolts have come loose, the conrods have snapped. It can be a right mess in there. But uh, this looks fine. 